you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. To begin to solve this question, what we want to do is take this vertical dashed line and just extend it a little bit. And after doing that, we're going to make it our goal to calculate this angle right here, which we could pretty much call any variable. Maybe we'll use the Greek letter phi. So it's like a circle with like a line through it. And of course, to find this angle, we're going to apply Snell's law. Now in this Snell's law setup, we have n1 times the sine of theta1. Theta1 is marked in the diagram and is told to us in the question to have a value of 42 degrees. And since theta1 is immersed in water, we would have to use the index of refraction for water. And that would be a value that you would have to look up in a table. It's probably listed in your textbook. On the other side of the equation, we have n2, which is going to be the index of refraction of the material in which the angle phi is immersed. And that turns out to be crown glass, as noted in the question. And again, you'd have to look up the index of refraction for crown glass in the same table that you found the value for water. And then our unknown angle is phi, and that's what we're going to try to find. So why don't we actually divide both sides of the equation by n2. And then to isolate the angle phi, we'll have to take the inverse sign of both sides. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. We look up the index of refraction for water, and it turns out to be roughly 1.333. Theta 1 was given to us, again, as being 42 degrees. And then the index of refraction for crown glass is 1.52. And so when we type this into our calculators, we get an angle of roughly 35.9 degrees. So that's that angle right here. If we look carefully, we can see that this angle here would simply be 90 minus that angle, since we have a right angle formed by the vertical dotted line and then this horizontal line. Now 90 minus 35.9 is 54.1, so that's that angle right there. Now if we look carefully, over at point P and extend this horizontal dotted line, we can see that we have this Z shape right here. Kind of looks like a backwards letter Z. We recall perhaps from a geometry class that when you have two parallel lines, so a line here and then a line here, and then there's a third line that cuts through them, these two angles are equivalent. So if this angle is 54.1 degrees, then this angle right here also is 54.1 degrees. And the reason that's useful is because now we can apply Snell's law again to find theta 2. So let's set that up. So here's Snell's law again. Just be careful about the indices of refraction, the n1 and the n2. Notice that now we're calling n1 the crown glass or the index of refraction of crown glass because our incident ray at this point P is immersed in the crown glass. So n1 would be the index of refraction for crown glass. And then when the light ray exits point P and out into the water, we would have to use the index of refraction for water, which would be our N2. So that's just something to keep in mind. We can solve this equation for theta 2 by dividing both sides by N2 and then taking the inverse sign, just like we did before. And then we'll plug in the known values. And when we simplify that, we get approximately 67.5 degrees for the value of theta 2. So that's that angle over here. In fact, I think we've solved part B of the question first. I got a little ahead of myself, but theta 2 is exactly what part B of the question was asking for. So we've solved that. We can go back to part A and look for the vertical distance from the top of the block to point P. And that's marked in the figure as being y. If we look carefully, we can simply use a little bit of trigonometry now. We have this angle marked as 54.1 degrees. The side that's marked y is opposite that angle, and then this side right here is adjacent to that angle. And of course, tangent relates the opposite and adjacent sides of a right triangle. So let's write out the tangent function. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So again, the opposite side is y, the adjacent side is the 3.5 centimeters, and then the angle itself is 54.1 degrees. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by 3.5 in order to isolate y. And then we'll pick up our calculators and we'll type in 3.5 times the tangent of 54.1. And we get approximately 4.84 centimeters. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. 
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer.